everyone welcome to another week in our garden it's been an absolutely beautiful week we've had a frost nearly every morning we've had hot sunshine for the rest of the day which has been wonderful because we had to get some jobs done outside and then yesterday it spoiled itself because it rained today it's very overcast and cool probably as it should be this time of year but we've pressed on and we've got quite a few jobs done we'll show you down there later what we've been up to uh, now first off I'm going to show you the propagator with those seeds in we planted last week now I have had the grow light on that was gifted to us from Gemma grow lights very very good I've had switched off at the moment because when it's on it turns me a funny colour in there you'll be saying it looks ill so I'll switch it on let I show you what's coming up most things are coming up and then we'll switch it off so we can get on with other jobs okay as you can see the sweet peas are coming up very very well the tomatoes three varieties up and I put some cabbage golden acre in those small green ones there so I can get those up quick they'll grow quite quick when we get them down the garden in the frame and they'll be for the cold slaw in the summer the lovely small cabbage just right for the job these at the back are the broad beans because I haven't got enough seedlings yet to fill the propagator up I just put those in for now they don't really need this but it fills that space so it's not wasting heat now we're going to do the soil samples today uh, Diane will show you the bottles in a moment the samples haven't really settled yet it's the clay and the silt that we have here and it's going to take an eternity to, sell, uh, to settle now if yours is settled do get the kit out follow the instructions and you can start doing yours I'm afraid we might have to wait until next week for these to settle they're very very misty yet there's mine as you can see they've been stood for a week they're just beginning to clear at the top but there's not enough clear liquid to get a sample off yet so I'm afraid it's a case of waiting a little longer there's the soil kit waiting as soon as it's settled we'll start and get those done I did say I'd show you some of the geraniums that have overwintered and the fuchsias this week as you can see they're doing quite well I think one or two well it looks dead but it's actually breaking green there and that one has got a bit of green on it as well no rush yet and what I might do is just miss them a little bit but I haven't watered them all winter they've just sat on that shelf over there but we're, they're doing all right there's no problems there but I say it's a little bit early for waking them up yet now these are the seeds we're setting this week there's the leek that we got free from the kitchen garden magazine got quite a few seeds from them got celery from browns cabbage sherwood that's the summer cabbage that you use for coleslaw so i want to get that in and get it going i've got this whole packet of lettuce it's winter density so we'll put that in and we'll try and get it going even though it's going to get a lot colder um, a bit of cauliflower all year round just a few not a lot uh, those five are all we'll put in this this week next week we start the serious seed set okay now this is cauliflower all year round what i'm going to do is plant just a few periodically up through the season so we can keep a steady flow of collies through you don't want a lot of cauliflower in the middle of summer so just a few just very light scattering that's plenty look there you go that's all we need to start to start it off just a little bit of compost on top just tighten it down a little bit there you are put the label in somebody has asked me how 
I water the seedlings and the seed and the plants in the propagator and I said I'll show you this week this it's a bottle that I always keep next to the prop so it's warmer if it'll go outside and fetch it'd be far too cold and then I have a loose I put the mister on so it's quite loose don't pump a lot of pressure into it and we'll do these beams because the others have been done and you just gently press until you've got that little stream of water coming out look. then that's fine keep the tops nice and moist the thing is if you keep the tops moist it slowly goes down the plant pot and everything it keeps the compost wet you don't want them saturated but just enough here we are look. And that's it now to water the newly planted seed what I do I have a little tray and then I just pop that in like that and I let the water come up from the bottom this is also water that's kept in the shed so it's same temperature as the shed it's not stone cold just let that come up then put it in the prop and give it a spray over now and again to keep the top moist and then that'll stay moist until they germinate now as everybody knows we're trying to cut back on our plastic use so over the last two years now we've not bought any plastic pots and mainly it's when people know your gardener they usually bring boxes of pots for you so I've kept going on that and we've actually got to the stage now where as regards seed trays I've only got two left so to save me buying some I've decided to make some this is the seed tray I'm going to make it's all recycled wood and it's just been sanded these are old fence panels they've been outside for oh, maybe three years in the weather so it's well weathered and all the um, preservatives has long long been washed out and this was a piece of old wood I had in the shed here so I've cut those into the length I've put a copper wire across just to stop it from splaying like they used to in the old days and I put two beads at the bottom just to hold it off the bottom so the water can get away quite a nice little tray if as soon as you finish with it you put it in the sun or put it in the shed to dry and then stack them away the last a few years I'll just show you how I make one quickly and then we'll go down the garden okay very simple to make what I've done I've made a set like this that I keep for a template so I just pop it on the old bits of old, old uh, fencing and just then just cut them out it's nothing exact about them just anyhow so and a few small nails a few pins and a bit of glue okay let's see what we can do so I've already actually put a mark on it where I want them I've put it together look, and I've struck a couple of lines on it just to save time so that's the side it's there look. so that will be the bottom on the sides like that and these will be tacked on to the ends and these underneath okay we'll wet the wood where we put the glue because the, the glue needs to be on to wet wood so it soaks in and it activates the glue okay right so I'll do this side and then I'll do that side and then see how we're getting on I have actually pre-drilled these because my hands are very 
stiff now for holding those pins so I've drilled them and make life easier for me and then all I do simple stuff got wet on it so it's water activated so it soon go just have to wait for it to run down the bottle a bit and then just a few touches once it starts rolling out you'll see can you see you know just just a little touch now and again doesn't need a lot that's it plenty and then I'll do this side and then I'll do that side and come back to you I'll do this side with you make sure it's the wet side going to the the wood and then I have trouble with these pins because my hands are so so stiff my hands now I struggle a little bit so into position and the little hammer and just tap them in okay and that's the the pins that will hold the timber in place until it till the glue sets the large one here, I put three in this one. So, we we'll have three. Okay. I'll just pop that in. Remember it's the, the wet side down. Just move that along so it holds it. There you are. If there's a little gap between, that's fine because that's just going to let the water out. When you're using them, it's best to just pop a bit of newspaper in the bottom which also acts as a little reservoir. I can remember when we used to do this with fish boxes and they used to smell terrible. There you go. So I'll do the same to the other side and then come back. So that's the bottom done. A little bit of a gap, let the water out, that's fine. Now we'll put the sides on. Same way I set it up, glue it and then pin it. Okay, that's got some water. I have to wet them so the glue takes. And same again, a little bit, bit glue just a few spots not a lot it does tend to swell up quite a bit the glue when it when it activates so it gets you only need a little and that's the wet side down remember you don't have to be too exacting they'll be fine Just tap it to lock it a bit, and then this one. And that one. Two more. Then we'll turn it over and do the other side. That now is no good. There we go. Right. I'll do that side and come back to you when this is done.
that's your little box started as you can see if we left it like that these would just splay out so what we do it's been pre-drilled and then we put a piece of copper wire around them or any wire as long as it's sturdy wire you don't want wire it's going to go rusty so i got this bit of old copper wire in the shed so i thought i'd use that i have pre-drilled it so that hopefully will go through there you go once it's on the inside just bend it down like that take it down and put a good corner bend on and then if you get a bit of scrap wood as an anvil and just tap that that just tightens that up nicely for you there yeah. pull it across nice and tidy if you can and then the idea is we've got to get through that hole so we don't need all this now so we'll just cut that off bend it over a little and then there's the hole we need to get in. okay a little bit awkward but it will go that's it like this through I just get the pliers now and just give that a pull. Uh, it's a bit loose as you can see, so make it nice and straight. And then you put your pliers onto there, you can actually pull that until it's tight. That'll be nice. Though. And when it's tight, put it on that little anvil and just give it a tap. And that's the that's the bottom one now these won't splay now you see so that'll do nicely now we've got this nice box and if we don't put something across there to lift it a little then any water that goes underneath will drain so we put two pieces on exactly the same glue it on tack them in and that'll be done we do one it tidies up the edge as well because my joints aren't that good but for just for a few seeds it doesn't have to be a Chippendale that'll go nicely on there a little bit of glue any glue you can use I just use this because I've got it okay wet side down and then we'll pop some nails in just to hold it but they're only little tiny pins I haven't pre-drilled this so you'll have to bear with me while I try and get them in we'll get two in To save my hands, I'll just pop them in these pins as it'd be easier for me. Oops. There you go. One more. I should do the same to that side and then I can wait. I put the two little strips on the side just to hold it off the bottom. The glue is still wet but when it's dried in about 12 hours till it really dries through 
and then you've got a little seed tray to show you the pear there's the pear now make it out of whatever wood you want obviously this wood from that was a fence panel was actually on its way to the fire heap and I rescued it and a little bit of sanding not too much and it's made me a couple of seed trays and I shall continue till I've got six of these ready and I should probably make a couple of half trays as well and then next week when I start the main set I can start using them then they will stack when they're finished and as I say they've cost nothing everything there I had around the garden and the wood was on its way to a fire anyway so it's a good job done I don't mind the same size look so but as I say I've got this one and one more so if I make six I've got enough and they'll last years if as soon as you dry them out uh, as soon as you finished as soon as you finish using them dry them out stack them in the shed somewhere dry they'll be fine for several years now we've got to have a walk down the garden and show you what we've been doing right we're right down the bottom of the garden where the new greenhouse is going to go byron's come and took the wall down for me and there's the rubble and as you can see the wall is growing a little slowly this week it was getting a bit hot down there but the window space is being made and hopefully i'll be able to continue a little bit more today yes i'm hoping to make a little bit better progress next week it was far too hot down there we couldn't get on i'll show you the what progress done on the beds as well i have been digging right as you can see i've got a little bit more done down this end i've got the timbers down ready treated to fit the garlic seems to be doing all right but it's desperately dry down here they do need some water but i do believe it's going to rain tomorrow and soon as it rains i'll be able to hoe through these plots and it'll with it being a little bit softer will break them down a little it's just that section over there now to dig and get these paths put in and then we're ready for the setting okay now the other thing we need to do which will be tomorrow now it's getting quite late and quite cold actually is to put the grapevine in so we'll do that tomorrow morning first thing okay so i'll see you tomorrow bye now good morning saturday morning today We're running a little bit late this week we've been waiting for the posts for the frame that have just arrived so we're going to put the grape in anyway and then i'll put the post over in later and put the frame over now we're going to set the grapevine but with it being a hungry feeder and it's in for many many years i'm going to put hoof and horn in it blood fish and bone and even some dried blood they're all long-term fertilizers that will really give the great chance to get established it does have a massive root system so once it's out of this hole and it'll be all over okay this is the hole i've dug i've actually gone through the clay which Diane will show you in the wheelbarrow it is real heavy brick clay what we're trying to garden on so we have, i've taken that out and I've turned some good soil into the bottom. I've got some nice leaf mould and good soil in the barrow ready to top up. So we'll just pop these in. Now, this is this is fish blood and bone. Okay, we're going to put that much in. It looks a lot. But you wait until it's dug in and I'll be anything showing. Then we'll put dried blood in there. Dried blood is good. It's about the same amount. And the other thing we're going to put in is hoof and horn. 
this is really long term so this is a good good piece of that as well the other thing i'm going to add is the volcanic rock dust so the minerals are there a good handful of that i think there we are that'd be fine mix all that now in that bottom it's quite a deep hole and what I shall have to do once I've planted it I'll have to put something round it and keep the chickens off or so they'll dig it up again this will this is the good garden soil what I fetched from the bottom and I've mixed it with leaf mould that we made in the bin and then I shall mix it all up again piece of wood there not to come with the leaf mould doesn't matter I should mix all that up again now and then plant the vine. Gives it a good start. And then we top up with just the soil so the nutrients are down the bottom so the, you don't just grow weeds in the nutrients. I'm just going to turn it out of the pot and check it for vine weevil etc. The buds are beginning to swell so it's time it was in. It's well rooted. We'll just have a quick look for vine weevil. If there's any in here, they'll be in there. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. If there's any in here, they'll be like a maggot this time of year, which I can't see any. I can't see any roots eating away, so I think we're all right. Open it up a bit as we go. Yeah, that's fine. Look, I can't see any in there. Not too deep because the soil level is there. Look. Okay. that's nice now my soil level is there look so that'll be just about right there I just pull that in and I shall leave this cane in for now just to support it till it gets going onto the main main thing. I'll just top this up now and then tighten it down, give it a drink to settle it and we're done. I'll just level around. And just bring some of that soil over. That'd be fine. Tighten her up. Quite tight, but not. Don't jump up and down. But quite tight. We'll water it well and that'll settle the settle the soil around the roots even though it's quite wet down there. There you are, that's the grapevine planted. Plenty of food down there, or slow acting food, so maybe the next few years while it's establishing, it takes two years to establish, it's got plenty of feed in it to give us a nice 
a nice top that we can train over the top then hopefully in two years time we'll have some nice green grapes to eat dessert grapes as well we're looking forward to those so that's it for now now that'll be it for this week it's been a beautiful week we've got lots done and uh, many many thanks for those people who have subscribed we do appreciate it and thank you for watching so hopefully we'll see you next week bye now